you know, re- maybe read through the, the, the condensed version of the Encyclopedia Britannica. I'd recommend that. Um, you can always like skip <laughs> subjects where you, you read a few paragraphs. And For many of you watching the channel, it's called the Seven Figure Squad. How to think like a millionaire, how to strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. And I'm humbling myself right now, asking myself, because this guy's obviously a billionaire. He just spent 40, what, $44 billion to buy out Twitter. And I'm asking myself right now, would I really be reading a condensed version of the Encyclopedia Britannica? So you and I are probably experiencing one of the greatest business moves in the history of our generation. What am I talking about? The takeover and buyout of Twitter by Elon Musk. Now, who is Elon Musk? A lot of people are seeing this name of Tesla, people see uh, SpaceX, but Elon Musk back in the day, in his 20s, sold his company to Compaq Computers. And also he's one of the co-founders of PayPal. And so Elon Musk has made a living, not being only an innovator, being an entrepreneur, but always reinvesting his money into the next big thing, or in his case, next big things. So in this episode, I'm gonna do a reaction on Elon Musk's advice for young people. Let's check this out. You, uh, like I mentioned with, with SpaceX, you give a lot of people hope and a lot of people look up to you, millions of people look up to you. Uh, If we think about young people in high school, maybe in college, um, what advice would you give to them about, if they wanna try to do something big in this world, they wanna really have a big positive impact, what advice would you give them about their career, maybe about life in general? Try to be useful. Um, You do things that are useful to your fellow human beings, to the world. It's very hard to be useful. You know, when I was broke, nobody wanted to help me. You know why? Because I made it about me. However, once I decided to get involved in business and I realized I needed to serve other people, that I need to help other people, I realized I got to make it about we. I got to make it about us. And the weirdest things, now that I'm making money, now that I've got some form of cash flow and some form of... some of respectability in the marketplace. Now everybody wants to help me. Now I get gifts. I get people wanting to help, wanting to assist. Hey Matt, how can I help better serve you? And at this point, money, as much as I can retire and fit off into the sunset, me and my wife are happy with our current situation. We made it about other people and we just cannot stop. And when Elon Musk, I'm sure he's got that same thought process too as well. More, more magnified than my wife and I, but he says, if I make it about other people, I just can't stop. I want to be valuable. Then here's the reality. The reality is when you're older, you have the benefit of looking back on experience, looking back on your life, looking back on some of the past that you walked on. I'm just curious for you, for those of you who are older, for those of you in your 30s and 40s, maybe even 50s and 60s, what would you say to the younger version of yourself Put in the comment section below. I'm very curious about what you have to say to the 20 year old version of you. Put in the comment section below. Um, very hard. Um, you know, are, are you contributing more than you are you taking consume? consume? That's you right. Know, like, like, uh, like, can you cr- for, tr- try to have a positive net contribution to society? I don't know exactly what he just said there, but it sounded pretty fancy. Let's continue. Um, I think that's the thing to aim for, you know, not not to try to be sort of a leader for just for the sake of being a leader or whatever. Um, yes, don't be a leader for the sake of being a leader. Seek to have influence and guidance based on what you set an example for first. So instead of just being a manager leader that way, so hey, everybody, you need to do this. It's called bureaucratic, right? Hey, you need to do this. To change the world, you need to do this. Hey, to fix everything, you need to do this versus an influencer, a leader, a true leader is not leading people based on his title. A true leader is leading people based on what they stand for and their purpose. And then everybody else wants to follow. And that's why a lot of people follow Elon Musk. A lot of time people who, who, a lot of time the people you want as leaders are are the people who don't want to be leaders. (laughs) So. Isn't that interesting? People that are defaulted to become leaders. Patrick, but Dave and I were having a conversation. Some of the best presidents of the United States of America did not want to be a president, but yet they were the best leaders. I'm thinking about back to our first president of the United States of America, George Washington. You need to figure this stuff out. Sometimes the best leaders are those that didn't want to be in that position to begin with. Uh, Use the mental tools of physics 
and apply them broadly in life. They are the best tools. When you think about education and self-education, what do you recommend? So there's the university, there's uh, self-study, there Very is uh, hands-on sort of finding a company. By the way, how do you learn best? Do you learn best by being in the classroom? Do you learn best by being in a formal institution of learning like high school or college or your master's or PhD? Or do you, like myself, learn with hands-on, hands-on involved field training? On the job training, how best do you learn? Company or a place or a set of people that do the thing you're passionate about and joining them as early as possible. Um, there's uh, taking a road trip across Europe for a few years and writing some poetry, which- uh, <laughs> This guy's going off into so many different ways for you, for you to learn. I've learned hands-on and personally for me, I learned by being an apprentice, being under somebody's wing to watch their moves, to watch the behaviors, watch your actions, and to watch and listen. Three, which, uh, which, which trajectory do you suggest? For, in terms of learning about how you can become useful, as you mentioned, how you can have the most positive impact. Sweet. I'm interested in his answer because this guy's a scientist, he's not a shipper. I'm interested because notice so far that none of his answers so far are very scientific or very detailed or very logical or on what we call higher laws. So read a lot of books. Mm. Just read, like, <laughs> basically try to ingest as much information as you can uh, and try to also just develop a good general knowledge. Um, so, so you at least have like a rough lay of the land of the, the knowledge landscape. Um, like try to learn a little bit about a lot of things. Um, cause you might not know what you're really interested in. How would you know what you're really interested in if you at least aren't like doing it peripheral explore, exploration of broadly of, of the knowledge. Okay. Plans. Listen, I didn't have the luxury of what Elon Musk is talking about. Why I find myself when I came into the awareness of, I need to know a lot about things. I was already reactive to the world, meaning that I already found myself married, divorced, having a kid going through bankruptcy having to leave the military because I could not be part of a unit that uh, would have a deployable Marine. So I need to take charge of my family, my children. I need to be there as a father. I didn't have this aspect of having a broad capacity to learn, to learn a lot about a lot of things. I had to learn a lot about one thing. And that one thing for me was what's the best way for me to put food on the table to maximize the time that I have. Uh, I could not be the typical 40, 40 hour work week type of guy because I need to drop off my kids by 8.30, pick them up by 3.30. So any nine to five job would not fit my schedule because as a single father, I wouldn't have that situation. I know some of you that watched our channel here on the Seven Fear Squad, you were late a lot with that. You weren't raised in this type of household where you had time. Many of you were reactive to the situation, but however, I will agree with what he said is, if you're gonna learn something, get, and you come into the awareness of learning about something, you gotta make sure you learn a little about a lot in a short period of time, and the majority of the time, it's how do I make money, how to put food on the table, and how to get this financial engine working for me. The knowledge landscape. Um, and uh, you talk to people from different walks of life and different uh, industries and professions and skills and occupations, like just try you know, learn as much as possible. You know, one time at our annual convention during COVID, during the lockdowns, we had a virtual convention for our company. And uh, as a guest speaker, we brought on Pitbull, and Pitbull was fantastic. He was obviously he was a, he was a fan favorite amongst our company. And one thing I recognize about Pitbull is that every time a certain Latino would come up and talk to him, Mexicano, Ricky Aguilar in, interviewed him. But anytime you bring up somebody in Puerto Rico, somebody in Haiti, somebody in Dominican Republic, somebody in Brazil, he'd find a way in his language to articulate a slang sentence to relate to that audience. No, if he's talking to the uh, Puerto Ricans, he says, hey, Boricua, right? They, they, they talk to the Dominicans, hey, que lo que, que lo que, right? He talked to the Haitians, you know, sac passe. So he'd had all these different sayings about everybody in his culture. And what would happen to Pitbull, he'd actually cross over into the demographic. He even crossed over into pop culture, not just being a hip hop artist or being a gangster rapper, or whatever the case would be out of Miami, but he became a crossover pop culture artist that a lot of people love to receive that a lot of people welcome to receive because he was able to relate with a lot of people. But just generally, like I said, I would, I would encourage people to read broadly um, in many different subject areas. Um, and, and, and then try to find something where there's an overlap of your talents and 
and, and what you're interested in. So people may, may, may be good at something, but or they may have sk skill at a particular thing, but they don't like doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to try to find a, a thing where you ha you're, that's a good a good uh, combination of of your of the things that you're inherently good at, but you also like doing. Well, you, you got to learn about things somehow. So re reading a, a, a broad range, like just really re read it. You know, at one point when I was a kid, I I, kind of, I read through the encyclopedia. Uh, so <laughs> that's pretty helpful. Okay, truth is, man, you're not going to find a guy like me and many of you are not going to read through a Dalgon encyclopedia. Do you even know what an encyclopedia is? Okay, these are these books back in the day. They had to update every year, one or two years. But an encyclopedia salesman would pull up to your house and knock on the door and sell you a set of encyclopedias. I remember doing that back in 1995 when I had my kid was first born. I felt guilty not to bring an encyclopedia, purchase an encyclopedia for my kid because I wanted my kid to have access to knowledge. Well, guess what your encyclopedia is today? It's YouTube. So find out one subject matter that you're really intrigued about. Go down that rabbit hole. Find out the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, the ugly. Master that craft. There's so many things right now on YouTube that you can learn a lot about if you're in your, uh, the early part of your life, in your 20s and 30s. And obviously, there's advice for young people. And for somebody in your 40s and 50s and 60s, you're considered young too as well because this is probably the first time in your entire life we actually had to start thinking for yourself instead of just pleasing somebody else or pleasing a boss or pleasing a family member. You woke up in your 40s, 50s, and 60s saying, I want to do something for me. And so go down that rabbit hole of figuring out what is it that you like and love to do and get good at it and get deep sense of knowledge to it. So therefore you can start applying it. So that was pretty helpful. Um, and uh, there also things I didn't even know existed, a little lot, so obviously. And it's like as broad as it gets. Encyclopedias were digestible, I think. Uh, you know, whatever, 40 years ago. Um, so, um, you know, re maybe read through the, the, the condensed version of the Encyclopedia Britannica. I'd recommend that. Um, you can always like skip <laughs> subjects where you, you read a few paragraphs. And For many of you watching the channel, it's called the Seven Figure Squad. How to think like a millionaire, how to strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. And I'm humbling myself right now, asking myself, because this guy's obviously a billionaire. He just spent 40, what, $44 billion to buy out Twitter. And before, he had a, he flipped his money into selling a company to Compaq, flipped that money into building PayPal, and flipped that money to selling it to $100 million. Flipped it to SpaceX, flipped it to creating Tesla. He's flipped it into so many different businesses. And I'm asking myself right now, would I really be reading a condensed version of the Encyclopedia Britannica? The short answer is no. I got a life, I got parents I got to take care of, I got kids I got to take care of, I got a couple businesses to run. Now, with that being said, there are some tools here to condense a lot of information. Number one, I like reading books through Blinkist. It's an app that condenses a book in about 15 minutes into digestible chapters. Number two, if I really like a book, I'm going to not only read the book, but download it on Audible. So if I put it over my head, read the book and listen to it at the same time at 2x speed, I can breeze through the book very quickly because our brain hears things faster versus then reading things faster. So you gotta figure out how you consume content to increase your knowledge about something, so therefore you can find ways to increase your experience. Get subjects where you, you read a few paragraphs and you, you know you're not interested, just jump to the next one. Uh, so read the encyclopedia or scan, sk skim through it. Um, and, um, but I, you know, I put a lot of stock and certainly have a lot of respect for someone who puts in an honest day's work uh, to do useful things. Like, I wonder how this guy gets his ideas. You gotta pay the price for financial freedom. You gotta pay the price. And Elon Musk has paid a hefty price himself. And and just generally to have like a, not a zero sum mindset um, or, or a, like have, have more of a grow the pie mindset. Like the, if you, if you sort of say like, when, when we see people like have some, including some very smart people kind of t uh, taking an attitude of uh, like, like, like doing things that seem like morally questionable. It's often because they have at, at a base sort of axiomatic level, a zero sum mindset. Axiomatic is defined as self evident or unquestionable. Here's an example. It is axiomatic that dividends have to be financed. Guess we all learned something new today. Um, and, and they, without realizing it, they don't realize they have a, a zero, a zero-sum mindset, or, or at least they, they don't realize it consciously. 
Um, and so if, if you have a zero sum mindset, then the only way to get ahead is by taking things from others. Ooh, that was a good one. So zero sum mindset is defined as this. Zero sum thinking perceives situations as zero sum games where one person's gain would be at another's loss. Therefore, if you're gonna get involved in something, that's an idea, have a triple win, not a zero sum mindset, but a win, win, win type of scenario. Uh, if, if it's like, if, 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 the, if the pie is fixed, then the only way to have more pie is to take someone else's pie. Right. But, but this is false. Like obviously Boom. the pie has grown Love dramatically it. over time, the yeah. economic pie. Um, so that's correct. One works from an abundance mentality and the other one works from a scarcity mentality. Scarcity mentality says, I only got this to go around. Whereas the abundance mentality says, hey, I got so much pie, got so much opportunity to go and I don't need to take from you in order for me to win. You can win, I can win, we can all win. Sure, we're going to compete. Sure, we're going to get in the trenches and, and crawl at this thing and, and lift up our businesses and lift up our endeavors. But that doesn't mean that my success has to be at your fall. So um, so the rea in reality, you can have the <laughs> so overuse this analogy, you can have a, a lot of, you can have, there's a lot of pie. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of yeah, pie. Pie is not fixed. Um, we uh, can so have a lot of pie. You, you really want to make sure you don't, you're not operating um, like a buffet of without opportunity. realizing it from a zero sum mindset. Where, where the only way to get ahead is to take things from others, then that's gonna result in you trying to take things from others, which is not, not good. Right, so if you have that mindset, guess what everybody else in your company then thinks that either works for you or partners with you or works together with you in some capacity, they think that the only way for them to win, you've actually fostered this mindset that the only way for them to win is to take away from you. And if they're gonna win, guess what they gotta take away from? The person closest to them, which is the boss, which is the entrepreneur which is who they're working for and who they're aligning. Do you want that type of environment around your life? Elon Musk says, hey, listen, in his advice to young people, there is so much power out there. You go out there, you innovate, you, you build, you create something that's a value and service to others, and we can all win. It's much better to work on uh, add, adding to the economic pie. Maybe, you know, so uh, you know, cre creating, like I said, cre creating more than you consume, uh, doing more than you, yeah, um, so, so that's that's a big deal. Um, I think there's like a, you know a fair number of people in in finance that uh, do have a bit of a zero sum mindset. I mean, it's all walks of life. I've, I've seen that. One of the one of the reasons uh, Rogan inspires me is he celebrates all. Oh, there's a lot. There's not not creating a constant competition. Like there's a scarcity of resources. And what happens when you celebrate others and you promote others? the ideas of others, yep. it it uh, it actually grows that pie. I mean, it, That's why I love every, like these he, videos. That's why I love doing interviews. That's why I love to interview lots of people that may not have the same mindset or ideas that I have because I want to learn from other people. It reminds me of these proverbs here in the good book, and it goes like this. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. The wealth of the wise is their crown, but the folly of the fools yields folly. A truthful witness saves lies, but a false witness is deceitful. How do you think about helping other people? How do you think about serving other people and making their lives better? Thinking that, man, I got so much to do, I got so much to come, so many people are so far ahead of me, in order for me to get some of theirs, I gotta take some of theirs. Elon Musk says here, it's the opposite. That applies in a lot of kinds of domains. It applies in academia where a lot of people are very, uh, see some funding for academic research is zero sum. It is, it is not. If you celebrate each other, if you make, if you get everybody to be excited about AI, about physics, above mathematics, I think it, there'd be more and more funding and I think everybody wins. Yeah, that applies, I think, broadly. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That being said, how are you taking Elon Musk's advice to younger people? For some of you who are maybe young in business, may not be young in age, but you're young in business, you're young in entrepreneurship, you're young in financial literacy. I'm encouraged by the scripture in Deuteronomy, it goes like this. God has given you the power to create wealth. That's Deuteronomy 8.18. God has given you the power to create wealth. Everything is in your grasp, everything is in your reach. Everything that you want and hope for is within a couple, three, four, five steps of the next best version of you. You just gotta grow into it. And don't be so impatient that I'm not receiving success right now. I put a tweet out the other day. A lot of people appreciated the fact that people sadly quit too soon. 
keep improving, keep growing, keep strategizing. Till this day, I'm still learning. Even for me, that's 48 years old doing this video. I'm still learning, I'm still improving. And just because I'm 48 years old doesn't mean I still don't have the insecurities of when I was 18, 19, 21 years old or 25 years old when I first started business. I still have those insecurities till today. It's just that now I've had 20 plus years of working past those insecurities. I know how to manage those insecurities. I know how to foster the positive behaviors that minimize those insecurities and maximize my opportunities and ways for me to grow. And I hope that's something you consider incorporating into your life. That being said, I love to know your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. You agree with Elon Musk, you don't agree with me, put it in the comment section below. Some things inspired you, some things encourage you, please, what made sense, please put it in the comment section below. I got a couple other reaction videos here with Waka Flocka and Damon Dash. What are your thoughts about what's going on in business today and how you can get ahead right now in this era post pandemic? With that being said, if you thought this video helped you out in somehow, some way, shape your mindset to fostering a better financial future, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of these other videos and they've helped you in some way, please consider hitting subscribe if you have not done so already. Make sure, last but not least, you hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your mind smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.